Hey guys, what's going on? Brandon Lee, and I have been working with Kubernetes clusters for quite some time now. I want to share with you guys what I consider to be quite possibly the ultimate GUI-based Kubernetes tool that you can work with to interact with your Kubernetes clusters. What is it? Is it the Kubernetes dashboard or is it something else? Well, surprisingly, it is a variant of a readily available commercial product in its free and open source form. Let's dive in and see what this tool is and how you can use it. Many of you at this point have heard about a tool called Lens. Lens is and has been up to this point a free tool from the company called Mirantis. Lens is a GUI tool that allows you to interact with and work with your Kubernetes clusters. In July of 2022, Mirantis made an announcement of a forthcoming release of Lens that would be a pro version, commercial release of the solution. Many in the community work were a little bit worried about this announcement. As with forthcoming commercial release of the product, what does this mean for the free version of the Lens tool? And so many started to think about possible alternatives to using Lens. However, Lens is an awesome solution. There is actually a free and open source version of Lens called Open Lens that is totally free and open source. There's not even a hint of commercial solutions or nags to upgrade to the pro release. Let's see how we can get this. Many may not realize that Lens springs from a completely free and open source project called Open Lens. You can actually Google for the Open Lens project on GitHub, and most likely you will land on the page that you see here with all of the files in the code repository. One of the things that you will notice, there are no binaries available, and that is the catch. This project is only made available with the source files that you have to compile and build yourself to take advantage of it. However, as with many awesome community members and those that want to share with the community, there is an individual that has pre-built these binaries for us to download and install. And if I'm pronouncing the community member correctly, it's Mohammed Kalkin. He has provided the Open Lens project in compiled binaries that make it readily available for you and I to download, especially if you don't have any developer experience or the tools to build your own binaries, done this uh, for us. So we can actually go here, we can download the specific binary for the platform we're running or the architecture. As you can see, there are ARM listings, there are Debian Linux, and if you expand on down, there is executables for Windows installer. So I'm going to just download the executable. Another red flag that some point out uh, with the OpenLens project is you will receive an error that this executable executable is not trusted. It's not signed with a proper code signing certificate. So you're going to get all kinds of warnings uh, from a download perspective. However, if you choose and make the decision to simply use these compiled binaries that exist in community GitHub pages, as we see here, you can certainly do that. It will allow you to install the Open Lens project. So let's run through the installer and then start taking a look at the interface. So we're running the Open Lens installer where it's a simple next, next finish process. We're just going to click install and allow the installer to copy over the files and then we will quickly be into opening Open Lens. As we can see, it is designated as Open Lens, so not Lens on the splash screen. So here we go. We got a Welcome to Open Lens logo that is displayed in dashboard screen. And one thing that you will notice is you don't see any nag about an upgrade to any type of pro version or any association with the Lens commercial product. And I really like the Lens utility here. It automatically 
browses your kube folder for kube config files so we can click the browse and it will automatically read those kube config files there's no cumbersome flipping back and forth between kube config files so you just simply have those listed in the open lens interface so i'm going to click one of the clusters vSphere k 8 which is a rancher cluster that i have running in the home lab environment one thing you'll notice is the beautiful dashboard that you get automatically see the metrics from your cluster you see uh, graphical designations for CPU memory pods that you have running. One of the things I really like as well is you get an immediate look at the health of your cluster. As you can see, it lists no issues found. If it finds errors or issues, it will automatically flag those and present that on the home screen dashboard, so to speak. Now, to get the integration with Lens or Open Lens, you have to enable a setting in your settings of your cluster. Once it reads those from the kube config, you won't immediately see this information. You have to go to the settings of your cluster and go down to the extensions lens metrics. You can toggle on the enable bundled Prometheus metric stack. Lens will then go through and automatically enable and install the required Prometheus stack that will allow pulling those metrics and telemetry data from your Kubernetes clusters. So let's go back to the main dashboard and just make our way through the interface. So if we click the nodes section, we will actually see the physical Kubernetes nodes that we have configured in our Kubernetes cluster. It's really nice. It shows you all of the metrics for the individual nodes. And note for each node, we can launch a shell to the specific node. We can cordon, we can drain, we can edit the node if we want to right from the interface of open lens. So really awesome, the ability that we have to interact with the cluster. If we go to workloads and we go to an overview and we change this to all namespaces, we immediately get feature rich information uh, regarding the pods, the deployments, daemon sets, stateful sets, replicas, jobs, all of those things. And we can actually see event related information from the workloads overview screen. If you want to see pods information, you can click pods. You can search for a specific pod. If they, you have one in mind, you want to take a look at, you can uh, filter, you can search really awesome to quickly interact with a specific pod. You can attach to the pod again, a shell. You can look at logs from each pod. Same thing for deployments. And also, not only can you navigate here, you can navigate from the top menu as well, across the top. One of the other things I really like, network information, getting that quickly and easily can be cumbersome, especially if you're just from a command line view with uh, kubectl commands. From the network view, we can click network, we can click services, and note the feature-rich information that we receive. We've got the name of a cluster, the namespace, the type of configuration, we can see here I've got most with cluster IP configuration. I've got a few with load balancer configurations. You can see the cluster IPs, the ports that have been set up. You can also see the load balancer external IPs and the status of all of those uh, specific elements of the network. You can see all of that information as well as endpoints. You can see ingresses, network policies for your namespaces, port forwarding that you may have set up. Also, same thing for storage information. Getting information for your persistent volume claims is super easy using open lens. You can see your persistent volume claims, persistent volume, storage classes, namespaces, events. You can also use the Helm menu in the open lens interface and note all of the helm charts that you have available you can search for and install those specific helm charts if you want directly from the open lens interfaces we can look at releases also access control service accounts cluster roles roles custom resources one of the cool things that you can do i'll show you this as well if i disconnect from this cluster and notice when we connect it places the cluster here in this view. We can select the option to add to hotbar. Then when we disconnect, we still have this cluster in the hotbar configuration. I can then connect to an additional cluster in the environment. I can add that cluster to the hotbar shortcut menu. 
I can then disconnect from that cluster and then note what we can do. We can connect to both clusters simultaneously, then simply flip back and forth between the clusters. Really super cool. One of the things that I really like and I have mentioned this a couple of times, you can interact at a kube config level with each cluster. If I launch the terminal that is built into OpenLens, I can run specific commands for this particular cluster. And if you note, if I quickly flip to the additional cluster that I have connected in the hotbar, I can immediately start interacting with the command line with that cluster while I'm connected to the command line of the other cluster. OpenLens does this for us automatically. It simply flips back and forth between those command shells between each Kubernetes cluster, giving you that single pane of glass that you want when you're working with multiple clusters, getting that information at a moment's notice at your fingertips. What do you guys think about OpenLens? I think it is a fantastic solution, especially if you're looking for the ultimate graphical user interface for interacting with your Kubernetes clusters. And for those that may not quite like the direction of Lens having a pro version, and they don't want to see any references to that commercial product in even the Lens personal license and solution, then OpenLens is a great alternative that is completely free and open source. And it's nice to know that this project is maintained heavily and is the source code from which Lens springs. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Hopefully you found this video overview of Open Lens helpful, and maybe it's something that you want to try in your home lab environment to work with your Kubernetes clusters. Well, until next time, keep home labbing. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys soon.